Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Black Heart is signing Black in again asking you to hit that share button. I want to thank you if you've hit share or like or subscribe. Um, but the share button by itself benefits us and the message is more important than the messenger. This message uh, is going to be about uh, the uh, gaslighting that sapphires try to do on nice guys from a young age. It starts at a young age, so I'm going to address it from a young age so that you understand why I'm telling you to do what I'm telling you to do and say what I'm telling you to say. Um, the nice guy, of course, uh, does not mean home, and I mean the real authentic nice guy and not the imposter. The thing is that the imposter is always used as an excuse and as a reason uh, to run from the nice guys. Now, it is valid if a sister says, what about the imposter? It's valid if a sister says, I didn't like this guy because he actually was not nice. That's okay. But we have to understand that that's oftentimes used as just uh, an excuse. The real reason is not always that. He wasn't nice. No, because now we have more and more women admitting, I want the toxic masculinity. I want the thug. I don't want no nerd, which... I understand to a certain extent the problem is that in the black community you're either the thug or the nerd in the women's minds there is no in between there's nothing like that and you can prove it because if you ask sisters about the fresh prince not will smith but the fresh prince character you ask sisters about that they could debate over whether he was you know street or nerd but they ain't no in between he was the actually in between Carl Winslow Jr. on Family Matters was in between. There weren't no thugs. But in the sisters' minds, there's either that or there's Urkel. Nothing in between. Failing to realize that actually um, Will was somewhat in between. He was not a thug. Carl Winslow Jr. was not a thug. These are characters I have to use because everybody knows them. So, um, to make a long story short, these are the things that we need to teach the young male members in our family if we see that they're nicer gentlemen. Number one, never let celibacy be the reaction to and the reward for you being a nice guy. It does mean that the women owe you the draws, but the reward and the reaction to it cannot be celibacy and you continue to be nice. Never let people, especially women, try to tell you that they're not sleeping with you because they respect you. Don't fall for that lie. That is never the case. Now, a woman may not sleep with you because she does not sleep with anyone because of a moral or religious conviction. But if she's sleeping with anyone and she's not sleeping with you, it's not because she respects you. It can be because you're not her type. That's okay. But it's not because she respects you. Don't let them tell you that. Um, the other thing we need to tell them is... This is not normal. Um, this, this reaction to your kindness is not normal in any context except the Western context. So go ahead and let them know the value of a passport early. The other thing that they have to know from the time that they're young is even nice women will play games on nice guys. You need to know that. We need to, I mean, we in this audience listening to me generally know, but we need to make these young brothers in the family understand that. I can't have this conversation with show younger family members and my video ain't made for kids anyway. But I can have these conversations in person with the younger men in my family when I get a chance to visit and you can have them with the younger cats in your family. If you are religious, i.e. Muslim or practicing Christian, you still have to tell these young guys in your family that a nice guy is the same thing. So even if he does not believe in fornication, that's fine. But you make him understand that he's the one who says no. If she makes it a habit or she makes it a point to say no, ditch her right off the bat. 
even if she's just a friend, but she makes it a point. Look, I ain't one of these loose. Um, yeah, okay. If you really aren't, that's fine. But the minute I find out that you did this with somebody else, we're done, even as friends. What? Why would you say that? Well, why do you have an issue with it if you're not like that? Now, if you are like that when you're telling me this, then you lying. But if you are uh, not like that and you're telling me this, then all you got to do is be consistent with everybody. Yes, this means even though we are friends because you said this to me, what kind of girl you're not, then the minute you become this way with another guy, we're done just as friends. They need to know this too. Because this sends a message to women that even with religious guys at a young age, they can't sit up here and pull this stuff. They cannot use nice guys in any way, form, or fashion at all. Either they will respect that nice dude as much as they respect any other man, whether they're screwing them or not, or there's nothing between them except they're just classmates when they're young or they're just workmates when they're older. Or they're just two people that met. It, it needs to be that. Because one of the things that we have not done is that we have not raised the worth of the nice guy in the minds of the men at a young age. Not the arrogance, just the worth. Now, I want to say this to those of you who like to say, well, you guys that talk about being nice guys have these issues and you're not really that nice and you've got this entitlement and that's really why you got problems with women. That's not true, nigga. There's only one guy in the world I know that's like that, and that's my black ass. Most of the other guys I know that started off as nice guys, uh, they didn't develop a sense of entitlement because they were nice. They developed a sense of entitlement because these same broads that were trying to tell them what they don't deserve were out here doing guys and giving a hell of a lot more to guys who did a hell of a lot less and deserved a hell of a lot less while lying about it from the very beginning. That's why. So if they were nice guys and they're not anymore, chances are they started off as nice. Now there are charlatans out there and imposters, but hey, look, you know, women say they can spot this from a mile away because they got the third eye on a woman's spirituality. So we're going to lead that. We're going to take that statement. But the dudes that, that, that say that they're like that and really aren't, and they're not necessarily imposters, meaning they don't know that they're faking the funk, were that way in a stop because the reward for being a nice guy was celibacy and that can never be a reward for being a nice guy. It's not even okay to make that a reward. Women have their choices, but they don't have the choice to escape the consequences of the choices that they made. And it is not okay to reward being nice with celibacy. You can react to it by being nice yourself. But if you out there, if you ain't a celibate woman, but you reward so to speak, nice guys with celibacy, even though you're not celibate with other men, then what you're saying is, uh, nice guy, you're less valuable to me. I respect you less because we all understand that when women lose respect for a man, they lose sexual attraction. Or that's a big lie, too, that women have been telling. One of the two is the case. And one of the and we need to make this understood by these young cats in the family. You being a nice guy does not mean that it is okay for women to respect you less than they respect a mean, ill man, a nigga. So, if the fact that you don't have neck tattoos at any age and gold teeth at any age and felonies on your record at any age means that your chances are slimmer, you automatically start plotting your escape to other pastures. Now, I just got... Uh, I was about to record and say to the Sispin brothers, Lady Snow Bunnies alone because of the global rise of white nationalism and safety reasons and all that. But I thought about it and I realized, you know what? Um, once brothers are into Snow Bunnies, they never let anybody tell them to do anything differently. Um, so no use trying to tell them that. And most, most Sispin men ain't even into Snow Bunnies. It's only a minority. But as I was thinking about it, I realized, no, actually, we need to tell these young and up and coming nice guys what the deal is. Brothers, those of you listening, you're usually adults. Do not let your sisters tell you, don't you be telling my son this stuff. Don't let them say that to you. Don't let your mothers tell you, don't be telling your younger brother this stuff. Don't let them say it to you or don't listen. Don't let your grandmother tell you not to tell your younger cousin this. Don't, mm, mm You say to them, look, 
if they come to you and they say this, then you say to these women nicely and respectfully because they're your relatives, listen, either you give up all the secrets, you give that young man all the secrets to what women want and what they don't want and don't hide nothing, good or bad, or I'm going to keep on telling them this, there is no option C. But do not let him grow into the guy that women don't want, but that they will use. Don't let him do that. Because you wouldn't let your daughter go into the woman that men don't really like, but that they would use, would you? You wouldn't intentionally do it. She'd have to make that decision in spite of how you raise her, not, not because of how you would raise her. Same thing with him. You make sure that if that's what happens to him in the, SM, you know, in the sexual market or the meat market or the marriage market, you make sure that if it does happen to him, it is in spite of you putting him up on game, not because you did not put him up on game. Don't do that to him. Those are the only two options, Grandma. Those are the only two options, Mom. Those are the only two options, Sis. Those are the only two options, Auntie. You put him up on game. You tell him the games the women are going to run, what kind of games they think they can run on him because of how he looks or his glasses or his demeanor. You can tell him the good and the bad, but you tell him both or I'm going to do it. This is what we got to say to him. Now, that's a rough thing to say. It is. But I must say this. I don't ask you to walk. I mean, I, I don't even ask you to talk the talk if I ain't walked it. And I had this with, talk with my mother. So if you're going to say, hold a black heart, what have you done to walk that walk? I can say this. I talked with my mother last summer when I was on vacation in the States. And I told my mother, I am going to tell your grandson whatever I know. And the first thing I told your grandson, and I didn't do this to be disrespectful to you, mom, because it's not hatred. It's just me trying to prepare him. She said, I understand, son. Go ahead. What did you tell him? I said to her, first thing I told him is women ain't going to be the ones to teach you what you need to know about women and what you need to understand. That's the first thing I told him. So, mom, I'm letting you know this so that if he brings it up, uh, you know, when I'm back at work and y'all meet for dinner or something, it's, it was nothing uh, malicious or anything like that. I'm just prepping him. She said, well, son, you're right. His mom and his aunt definitely ain't going to do that because that would mean they have to tell on themselves. That's what she said to me. I was lucky I got this positive response. I really was. But the reason we were having a conversation was because she said to me, uh, she was reminding me of an instance in which I was telling my younger brother something that I did learn. It was one small detail, but I, I did learn and he was still in middle school. And she was like, he probably can't handle that. And she was reminding me of that during the last vacation. You remember that time you said X, Y, and Z? And I said, okay, well, yeah, I get it. But you know what, Mom? Um, back then, I knew very little, but I was trying to tell him whatever I did know to help him out. However, and you know, maybe it worked. However, this time, Mom, now at my age, I'm telling your grandson what I know. And the first thing I'm telling him is he ain't going to learn what he needs to know from his mother or his aunt or even his grandmother or his sister. He got all them women on his mother's side of the family and ain't neither one of them telling him what he needs to know about women. I, and, and I'm not saying it's because I hate you or because I hate him, but because I don't want him to be the guy that they come along and use because he doesn't know. And my mother nodded her head and said, well, that's because if they did tell him what he needs to know, they'd have to tell on themselves. So I was lucky I got that positive response. I think I've said enough. Thank you for being patient. Uh, I hope that what I've said ain't true anymore, but you know, until that point, I hope it's a benefit. Assalamu alaikum. Thanks for listening. Black Heart Sign and Blackout and Black Male Power.